Am I a boxer? Do I look like a boxer? Hey, hello, hello. <laughs> it's such a pathetic attempt. It's sad. It's sad. When you're born Nelly, you'll die Nelly. That's the little lesson there. Hello, hello, and hello. Welcome to the Queer Edge. We have an amazing, fantastic show. It's going to be total Peter Pandemonium. Outrageous. We have the amazing Jackie Inks is with us with the news. The outrageous Barbarellas are here. Our co host for the week, the most perfect, perfect woman in the world in every way. Charo is with us. And from the Mass Music Project, we have Billy Close. And because she was in town and thought she would just drop by to have a little chat with me, the First Lady of the United States, Miss Laura B -b 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 Bush, is here tonight. All of that and Jackie Jet Bobbleheads yeah. for everyone in the studio audience. So hit the gas, because if it ain't broke, go ahead and break it. Because we queer edgers, we queer edgers, we queer edgers. Coochie, 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 coochie. We are a go. What are you doing right now? your reality. Make it up. Vodka martini. Two olives. This is my reality. What's yours? What's yours? What's yours? Jackie Chat. As many of you know, we are basically the Beverly Queer Billies. We uh, moved our show from Texas, and we've been here just for a couple of months. A and I haven't been sharing with all of you some of the Hollywood mysteries uh, and behind-the-scenes secrets that I've learned uh, so far, like, you know, how to po so find a celebrity when they're picking their green beans out at the grocery store. But one important thing that I have learned and I want to share with you is when you go to a movie to see a movie, when you talk to the screen, those people in actual fact cannot hear you. It, it, you, cannot carry on a, you cannot carry on a communication with people on the screen. I thought those people could always hear when I was telling them, don't go behind that door. But it's not true. It's Hollywood magic. It's what they call in Hollywood a facade. Ooh. Now you feel like you're in the business, don't you? <laughs> yep. And now to really make you feel in the, like you're in the business, our co-host this week is a legend from Latin America. And the queen, and I do mean the queen of my heart, it is none other than the Lady Charo. <laughs> Perfect, perfect. Look well, at this. Look wow. at that way. Do they, we look like we're going to the Take a picture. Prom? Wow. Like we're on our way to the pervy prom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I am glad. Hey, do I look Christmassy, eh? Yeah, you look Christmassy. This is it. This is. I dress very elegant because you know you dress very elegant. Well, thank you. T earlier, you told me I looked like an aristocrat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which I took as a compliment. But later, some people were saying they're not sh sure it was a. No, no, it's a compliment, and you look terrific. And uh, I am having a very good time in this okay. year. Here's my question. Yes. You're getting ready to go touring, aren't you? All the, yeah, I tour all the time. Yeah. Uh, my life sucks. Yeah. You, I mean, Charo told me earlier that she lives out of a toilet. Yes. Or, which is better than living in a toilet, I'm assuming. <laughs> but it's very close. <laughs> and Charo is also fascinated with the water, yes. the automatic water. 
Yeah, tell us about well, that. I was. Because this, this might be your first sign of senility. <laughs> yes. Kicking in. <laughs> a lot of ladies think that I am really uh, cuckoo, machuga. Yeah. Because, you know, I was born in Spain. Oh. A lot of people think, by the way, I talk that I was born in Mississippi, but that's not true. <laughs> I was born in Spain. Uh huh. In España. A, in España, a town called uh, Murcia. Do you know where is Murcia? No, where? Murcia is near Valencia, Cieza, Cáceres, Albacete, Andalucía, etc. San Fabio. So, a farm, uh -huh. and, and you got the toilets outside. Right. And you got the water from the river. Uh -huh. And you got your own fire when you put the branches and the fire starts. Mm. So, uh, in America, when I got these toilets, that they know when they had to run the run. water and i know no 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 this is to, to wash the hand i know how to trick the toilet you go like that and the the, uh, the electric guy think that uh -huh. you are done and run the water all the time i love that then i go <laughs> and i wash why my, do you love that Charles? i'm fascinated i'm fascinated because <laughs> it's like a, it's something new for me like i put you know sesame open sesame and i put the hand and the water is ready i say stop it the lady <laughs> the lady that they are near me say oh shit she's crazy <laughs> I mean, but I, uh, I, that's my house. Do you think that those ladies that see you doing this, and then also you work with the dryer, too? Oh, huh? yeah. Now, when I'm done uh -huh. with the hand, back and forth, back and forth, back and right. forth, so I'm having a good time. Then I go to the, the machine that you go, e -e -e. Uh -huh. but then my hands are very clean, and in uh -huh. case the other lady don't wash the hand, you uh -huh. know, then I go like this, and then I go with the elbow, hey, 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 bring in the paper, and the ladies again, I don't believe my eyes. They really think that, they probably think when I get out, that bitch is crazy. Yeah, well, or on drugs. I oh. bet they get on their phones and go, yes, it's true, Charles on drugs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they probably think so, but I'm having the time of my life. This is like a Walt Disney for me. The toilets in America. That is, well, you know what? Here's the cool thing. It takes very little to make Charo happy. No, no, it? not that little. No, oh. no. I'm very spoiled. It's just that I'm fascinated for this technique. Fascinated. <laughs> Completely. I, I, I love being fascinated. Uh, yeah, well, uh, what, what fascinated you? Well, <laughs> they're probably not the same thing that fascinated you last <laughs> night. Why, why your husband's not here <laughs> well, when I you guys were playing spoons? <laughs> Do we want to go into that again? No. Okay. He's no. going to get real mad. <laughs> okay. okay, now here's the thing, too, Charo. You have a son. Yes. One time you decided you wanted to teach him how to ride a horse, right? Yes. And you called the Mustang Ranch. Yeah, oh, wow. Well, you know, I wasn't born in this country, you know okay. that. So uh, I wanted my son to have everything right. that I don't have. And you so, wanted him to have a horse, not a whore. No, well, listen, with, okay. my, with my accent, I did, at that time I have accent. So I called I, I call the Mustang Ranch because it's on the yellow page. Uh -huh. And I call the, the person and say, I want the best horse you have for my son and for my nephews. And they say, how old your son and your nephews? And my son is four and a half, and my nephew five and a half. <laughs> and the lady said, don't you think that they are too young for that? I said, lady, they have to start some time. This is the best time. Bring me the best horse for them. Uh -huh. So finally, they got it, that I make a mistake, I mean horse, instead of horse. Uh -huh. So, I make a mistake, instead of a regular horse play, tac, 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 bonanza, what? I was into the, the horse house. So, at night, they came all the horses. Oh! <laughs> and they give me a two free ticket for when my son turned 18 and my nephew 19 and a half. So, they have it for free that night. They have a free... <laughs> You're such a sweet... How cool would it be to have a mother like Charo or an aunt like Charo, who's setting you up to get laid. No, no, I didn't mean at that time. Please don't misconstrue me. It was for, no, 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 let me make that clear. I just want that they go horse back riding. Horse at the age. At the age, four. Okay, okay. At the age 18, everything is different. Everything is different. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's but they America. have some, have they turned 18 yet, either one of them? Oh, yeah, my son is, my, my son yeah. is 22. And did he take advantage of the uh, offer? I will give him his next birthday the ticket. Oh. <laughs> Go to the most Oh, that is so sweet. Listen, uh, speaking of sweet, let's go to Jackie Ings. Jackie! With, uh, with some news on the edge. I think she looks about half crocked. I think she is. Uh, let's go to Jackie Ings with some news from the edge. Hey everybody, welcome in. First of all, a special hello to the Canadian girls that like girls. It is Canadian Lesbian Wednesday and a yes. special, 
special hi to all of you out there. Thank you for being here. We're going to start tonight with something from the Office of Homeland Security. Secretary Michael Chertoff is up in arms about his office being called racist and has come up with a brand new way to keep the peace while protecting Americans at home. No, they aren't outlawing Chicken McNuggets, Razor Blades, or reality shows. In what is truly a leap of faith, all male Arab Muslim immigrants, students, and tourists can bypass the INS centers and now register online. How big is this country? Chertoff hopes this will silence the ongoing accusations that Arabs in this country legally are treated in a prejudicial and discriminatory way and promises the still mandatory interrogation and human numbering cataloging will be quicker and less painless. In trying to close all the possible, possible loopholes, they also have an 800 number. The number is 1-800-466-3331, or it's easier for me, maybe for you, if it's better, 1-800-HOODED-1. Boston College, which is a Catholic university, recently put the brakes on an AIDS benefit dance because it was at odds with Catholic church teachings. A night in gay pre was the theme of the dance, and university officials are now meeting with gay and lesbian student leaders to plan another event with a less gay name theme. Since the GLBT group does need the funds generated by these events, we here on the edge think the students could keep the less gay officials happy while still attending a Lynn Cheney, Jody Foster sock hop, an Anderson Cooper, Jeff Gannon journalism poetry reading, or perhaps even a Clay Aiken Pink karaoke party. <laughs> Finally, something from the gospel according to Larry Flint. Looking for that perfect Christmas gift for that overzealous Christian on your list? Well, a Protestant youth group in Nuremberg, Germany, has a 2006 calendar for sale, and it features various teenage members of their church posing in erotic scenes from the Bible. The pics include a topless Delilah cutting Samson's hair, the prostitute Rahab posing in a doorway with garters and stockings, and a pretty much naked Eve tempting us with her apple. The man behind the plan, Pastor Bernd Grosser, said, it's just wonderful to see teenagers commit themselves with their hair, skin, and sexuality to the Bible. I have a very Christian mom. She will be pleased to hear that I was personally recommitted to the Bible and experienced my own second coming just last Friday night in the parking lot of the Roxy Theater. <laughs> I am Jackie Yanks. Lots more Queer Edge right after this. <laughs> Welcome back to the Queer Edge. Um, we do have an amazing, amazing show lined up for you tonight. But, you know, Charles was just telling me, I have yet in my television career been invited to the Bush White House or any White House. Actually, <laughs> since I've been doing this, I haven't been invited even to my own house. Uh, so, but you have been invited to three presidents? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I know the White House better than my kitchen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tell me once. Okay, you went to see Reagan. Yeah. You went to see Clinton. And Jimmy Carter. And Jimmy Carter. Uh, yeah, yeah, Clinton, okay. yes. But you're no Bush. No. No Bush. No. For any reason? No reason at all. You I, just... I, it's just that... Uh, if the occasion come, I will go, but they don't invite me. They don't. No. Nope. I bet Laura's <laughs> jealous. I bet Laura Bush is jealous. She's going to be here later. We'll have to ask okay. her. Okay. Okay, but Reagan, did you have it? Tell me about a Reagan, the time you... Well, it was, I was invited to the White House, and I want to be very, again, aristocrat. <laughs> and uh, I dress very elegant, and, and uh, I was working with Buddy Haggett in uh -huh. Las Vegas, uh, starting with him, and he said to me, what do you know about etiquette? And I said, yeah, yeah, this is the fur, this is the night, you eat like that. And he said, no, this is the White House. You're going to be very careful with, the, it's a gourmet dinner. And at the end, you don't drink coffee, but you need to ask for coffee when they offer you. And you got to say yes to the cream. You'd want it with cream. And the best kind of cream, you have to learn the fucking cream. The 
fucking cream. So I write it down. F U C I K N G fucking 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 uh -huh. cream. So I learn it. So I am in the White House, uh -huh. and I am sit down right here. This is the the president, and this is the big chat there, and the missus, and the king of king of Spain, and at the end of the dinner, the battle come to me. I said, Madam, would you like to get coffee? I say, Oh yes. And then I said, please, in a high voice, I want to know how gourmet I was. Please, don't forget the fucking cream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you know? Were set up. Oh, wow, no, I was set up. And I see everybody free like this. <laughs> I mean, Nancy Reagan. Nancy Reagan went like that. She never put the, the, the neck again. The face. <laughs> it was, I know. I, I know they're going to kick me on my ass and fly to Tijuana. I was so scared. But, uh, and they ask you, who taught you this? I was shaking. Uh -huh. I was shaking. And, and somebody asked me, uh, how long are you in America? And I said, no, no, no long ago. And he said, who teach you English? And I said, Body Haggard. <laughs> and then this person started to say, attention, attention. Okay. Body Haggard is her teacher. <laughs> Jackie, who else have we got here on uh, the we show? We have actually a special guest. Oh, you know, we really have, special, actually. We have a huge star from the underground music scene. You may remember him from the Meat Puppets. Uh -huh. Now he's out on his own. Here uh -huh. is Kirk Kirkwood. Uh -huh. Take it away, sir! This box of limes is burning cold No more of these moonbeams Burning down my door These dirty rhymes are on a roll That's not what it seems Crawling across your floor Painting stars in the purple orange night Grow This toothpick baby is chewing wax Pigs on a postcard are playing jacks They play for nothing, no looking back That's not what it seems Coming through the cracks Painting stars in the purple orange night Growing dreams of roses blue This box of limes is burning cold No more of these moonbeams Further to be sold These dirty rhymes are chewing glass That's not what it seems Coming over the past Painting stars in the purple orange night Go. Painting stars in the purple orange night Growing dreams of roses blue and white This toothpick baby, this box of limes, this box of limes This box of limes is burning coal This box of limes This toothpick baby is chewing glass That's not what it seems coming over the past I like it very much. Yeah. How are you, sir? 
Fair to Midland. Fair to Midland. You must be no, I'm doing pretty good. Thank you. Are you from Texas pleasure. by any chance? Mucho gusto. Mucho gusto. Mucho gusto. Mucho gusto. Mucho. Pleasure is all mine. Uh, that is uh, Kirk Kirkwood Snow. I think he lives in Texas now. I love it. Yeah, I do. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Texan. You are? Yeah. Hey, high five on that. Let's go. Uh, d let's well, go. I'm kind of an Arizona too. I, I like Arizona a lot too. Yeah. Let's go deer hunting. And let's go kill ourselves some uh, some left wingers. As long as it's alive, we can kill it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> now, all you got to do is shoot first and identify it later. We don't have to use guns. I got all kinds of weapons. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> Tell us this. Hey, you are known for being in the meat puppets. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, um, and so, by the way, I just want you to know, my daughter Okra, who's back there, is a big, big fan of yours. <laughs> okay. uh, and uh, that's why she, she usually doesn't come out here, but she wanted to see you perform. Um, you, do you miss the Meat Puppet days? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Meat Puppets were pretty good. Well, I would describe them pretty well, hot, but, punk. Well, yeah, they had that, but I was just going to, you know, when I was watching you go solo, most people that go solo, they go because they're so trapped, you know, like... For me, if I wanted to use horns on something, I'd have to quit my band. I mean, because they just don't do that. But the Meat Puppets were so... You guys did a lot of different things. So yeah. did you... I mean, so are you getting a newfound freedom by going solo? Or, or what was the... Yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot of freedom to it. I can do whatever I want. Yeah. I can go get lost in the middle of nowhere, and nobody will yell at me and say they want to go to Golden Skillet. And, you know, Waffle that House? Comes, that's, that's all I ever hear. I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I had to go to Golden Skillet, one of the two. Um, musically, I've always been able to do what I want. That was the whole goal, you know, just, I got into all kinds of stuff early on. When you guys uh, were blues, psychedelic at times? Yeah, I loved, I love everything. The first record I ever bought was like Bobby Sherman, Petula Clark oh, downtown. Oh, Bobby oh, yeah. Sherman. Yeah, the Bobby um, Sherman album. Yeah. You know, uh, and then the stuff like, uh, Magnificent Seven, soundtracks, uh -huh. stuff well, like that. CD's very good. The King and I, I love the March of the Siamese Children. So the Meat Puppets could do that kind of really? thing. Really? Oh, yeah. Now, you did not seem that I would never think of someone that were in that was in the meat puppets that would also have a love of musical theater. Yeah, yeah, cabaret big as a big deal for me. Yeah, they were all over. Seriously? Yeah. yeah. That yeah. is so We have Moot Davis coming on That's Friday. still what I like to hear mostly. I and then my buddy Alan Bishop uh, that was in the Sun City Girls, he just turned me on to some uh some Burmese pop music the other day when I was wow. in Seattle. It's beautiful, dreamy guitars of the Golden Triangle. Um I like anything. anything Can I read a quote? I hear your solo. He's very good. Yeah. Here's a quote that Mr. Kirkwood has, has blessed us with. Flamenco? Oh, yeah. Mr. Kirkwood says, I want to be remembered for my burning desire to be remembered. I am very proud of my two wonderful offspring, Mary Kate and Ashley. And I just thought that that was so pretty and beautiful. It brought a tear to my eye. Uh... I didn't know they were your daughters. Are you just proud of them being out there? Well, there's a boy and a girl. Those, those aren't identical oh, it's not twins. The, okay. People have the misconception. There, okay. Yeah. But you're just, you're just, you just want to be remembered for having burning desire to be remembered. Yeah. yeah. I don't even care about that, really. Uh-huh. Well, you're going <laughs> to... Are you a glue sniffer? I was. Yeah. Bagger? <laughs> Uh, you, uh, any, kind of, any container, you know. Soccer, yeah. soccer. Yeah. Models, okay. you know, the thing communist? Is, a communist. Um. Okay, there we go. All right, we're gonna, we have to take some commercials uh, because, we, because we're not totally communists here, so we do have commercials. You do understand, right? I'll take my beating. Okay, we'll be right back after this. Stay tuned. <laughs> That's my Christmas carol to you, and to you, and to you, and to you, and to you, but especially to Charo. Oh, gracias. Oh, gracias. Uh, listen. <laughs> listen. <laughs> I do not know how I'm going to live my life without Charo. I got to tell you. I don't know how I'm going to do it. Um, the Santa Monica Pier was recently lit up with brave new collaboration called the Mass Music Dome. The creator of the musical 
element to the show is here. Please welcome Mr. Billy, Mr. Billy, Mr. Billy Close. Yeah. Hi. How are you, sir? Come wow. be on. Here's the thing, you're all the buzz in town, dude. Everybody's talking about you and your no, new little shindig. You, you. you are you are the fizzle, dizzle, hot shit now. And now I come to see you and you're attractive. Imagine well, that. Thank you. So I you're talented that, you know? and attractive. I am neither. Don't but sell you, yourself short, man. Look at yourself, you know? Come on. Well, the only reason people like me now. It's because I'm friends with Charo. That's right. Oh. That's right. That's the only way I can get anywhere. But Billy, here's the thing. Let's talk about this for a second because then we're going to show it. The Mass Music Project, several of our staff went mm -hmm. to see it and were blown away. Now, most of them were blown away before they even got to the venue. <laughs> uh, so they were even more blown wow. away by the... Uh, so we're, can we take a look? Yeah, let's see it. Tell me as we're watching it what we're actually seeing. Sure. Uh, well, right there, actually, you're seeing one of the instruments that I've developed called the Avatar. Which is that is a guitar? A, it's sort of a, it's, it's got a guitar in it. There are a lot of different elements to it. Rick Nielsen oh. would love you. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, Andrea Brooke and Krista Bell, who are both just fantastic performers. Um, this is one of the mellower pieces we're watching here. Okay. Behind her, you can see some big drum sculptures. Yes. At different points in the show, those drum sculptures just bust into action and um, are played with a high, high percussive energy. You can see some strings that I'm playing there that are shooting out from the bridge. And those are actually, it's hard to tell in the shot, but those are actually headed out over the audience. And the whole dome itself is transformed into an instrument. Guys, wow! All right, so you know this is like avant-garde. Avant, it's like avant avant-garde. Am yeah. I right? It's neo avant-garde. Neo right on <laughs> avant-garde. Right, exactly. So my, I, I have to ask you this. All right, as you you could take the same. Let's say, how long were those strings? Eighty feet or? Yeah, the strings are roughly about 80, eighty feet. Yeah. So about if you took those same exact eighty feet. And put it in that dome, as compared to across our studio, as compared to across a canyon, wouldn't those same 80 feet of string sound totally different because of the? I mean, an instrument because is because of the environment. Yeah. Well, what's wild about it? I've been, you know, I've been developing these long stringed instruments for about 10 years, and uh, what happens is the chamber of the instrument mounts to the stage, and then the strings shoot out over the audience and attach to the back of the theater or. You know, we've done a lot of outdoor installations where they've gone to the top of the Space Needle in Seattle or right. across a valley and across a, um, the top of a mountain. And it's very sort of Christo-esque, you know. It's like Christo and music kind of combining, yeah, you know. Do they sound different, though? But they I mean, sound different, I mean, I play exactly. drums. You know, a maple drum sounds different than a birch drum. I mean, yeah. the, the environment right. makes all the difference in the world. What's going on here? Yeah, what's going on right here? It. Yeah, that's, that's being played percussively, so... Um, I'm playing it actually with uh, with mallets, and the whole thing is um, just comes alive with sound. I mean, it's just the right now. I'm, I'm just playing that bottom part of it, but the whole instrument itself is in, is resonating. Can you tune it? Oh yeah, very tunable. That's a good question. I was about to ask that question. Yeah, right now you're. Yeah. Are you a glue sniffer? You know, I've, I've sniffed a little glue. I, I don't do it anymore. At uh -huh. least I try not to. Why do you have some? Yeah, I, I do. Just a, I have a half bottle. We'll share it later. Got that. But uh, this thing is the happening thing now. It's sold out, all, right? And you're in Santa Monica. Can you tour with this? Yeah, we do a lot of touring with it. Uh, this specific project sort of just came into action. This was okay. the premiere of it, where we've basically taken the show and put it inside this geodesic dome. And so now we're a fully sort of functioning touring entity that can kind of be put down anywhere. The dome goes with you? The dome can go with us, yeah. Right. Oh. Or and we can also do it in the theater right. as well. Where do wow. you, where will you take the show next? Well, the next, um, we're actually uh, doing a project in Detroit and then Las Vegas and then New Zealand. And then back and we're touring through the Southwest this spring. Wow. How much so. diameter? How big are these, how do we talk, are we talking like big thick cables? Are we talking like guitar strings? Uh, I think spaghetti. 
It, vermicelli, actually. Vermicelli. Right, yeah, and, yeah. Then, and you don't. Transportation. Oh, now you're getting me hungry. Go ahead. <laughs> transportation. How you fold it when you travel? Good question, Joe. Very good question. Oh. It all compacts, goes into a truck, you know. It's, oh, you go by the truck. Yeah, you, use a truck. It can't fly. And you don't just, pluck it. You, act, you don't play yeah. like a guitar. The way the strings are played is we run our hands along the strings. Um, so you're actually pushing the vibration in the string. It's kind of like running your finger around the edge of a crystal glass. Look at this back here. Can we, got the, can we shoot oh, yeah, this? Oh, there we go. That is... That's some is of that the, you, uh, dude? That's me. Far out. Yeah. Look at that. That's more of a drum thing, obviously, right? Yeah, yeah, that's one of the spinning drum sculptures. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Very cool. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's combining a lot of elements. It's got... Well, it's kind of new agey in a way, isn't yes. it? It yeah. does. It has elements of that. It's it's sculpture. It's architecture. Oh. It's music. Are there new age groupies? <laughs> you know, that's a good I would question. think they'd be like going, "Hey, oh, man, cool. So I dig your music, and I'd really like to blow you." It's well, something you know, like that. Yeah, I mean, you get a little of that, you know. Uh -huh. But you know, actually, the the community that is really you know what? Show. I got to tell you, you gloss that over too fast, which <laughs> tells me, which tells me right off the bat that you're getting a lot of it, because you go like this. Yeah, you get a little, you get a little of that along the way. But get rid of this. Yeah. So you're busted on that. Yeah. Okay, but go ahead. Oh. Um. I don't know what I was going to say. So, oh, something about Burning Man. Oh, we've, we don't have the New Age clientele, but we do have a bit of the Burning Man community coming. Oh, I love the Burning Man community, yeah. yeah. How, did you, how does someone, I mean, you're, I guess it's in your head, but what kind of budget, and, you know, we don't need exact numbers, but I'm, I'm looking at this thing like, Jesus, what do you have to charge, $3,000 a seat to, to break even on? I mean, this is a big, huge deal. Well, how are you going to make money, or how are you going to break even, or how are you going to tour, or... Well, you know, uh, tickets are like $800. That's, that's what I'm thinking. You know, I mean, how you we're, uh, we're looking for corporate sponsorship. Oh, <laughs> that's a wise man. You know, <laughs> come on, let's, let's look it up. Yeah. I got like $5. I got 11 on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can be an no, investor. It's, it's, I love it. Um, yeah, it's, it's, love it. uh, it's an interesting process. You know, I mean, it, a lot of what we've done in the past has been sort of hired by performing arts centers to come in and do our show. Right. You know, we make money that way. Right. This is the first time where we've stepped out and self-produced. Well, it's great stuff. How large is your group? Uh, the team is about seven performers. Right. Yeah. And crew? You know, I have a feeling if you added a Jackie Jet to the mix, <laughs> that it would explode. <laughs> and, and you would be, like, offered gigs all over the world. You probably, we would be asked to fill in at that Celine Dion, Elton John. You know what? You. They can take over Las Vegas. They are in the style of the Blue Men. I yeah, do yeah, Las Vegas all the time. Yeah. I love Vegas. Years, three years. Yeah. And this is a not new for Las Vegas. Yeah, okay, but well, steady, don't travel. You don't have yeah. to travel, and that cuts down the expense. Do so like yeah. I'm very interested. This is it. They, get, they cannot travel. If you put it there, they can, it's a killer. It's yeah, very new. Real, that, wouldn't that be a cool a gig call. to open for uh, Charo? Oh, that'd be fantastic. Joey, <laughs> not talking the earth harp, which is what that's called, correct? Mm -hmm. What yes. do you What do you play? I mean, for more traditional musicians, what are you a drummer? Are you a guitar player? Are you a well, piano player? You know, I I grew up playing bagpipes. Seriously? <laughs> yeah. Is that I, true? I mean, I'm just into weird instruments. I've I love the bagpipe. Them. They're interesting. Yeah. And I yeah. love the bagpipe attire as yeah. well. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. a little. Yeah. No. And do you go all natural with that? You know, I, I've actually never been caught dead in the bagpipe attire, but I have played the pipes. Okay. Yeah, I'm just not, I'm not, uh, yeah. Not a skirt wearing type of guy? Well, I'll, I'll wear a skirt, but not a kilt. Yeah. Oh, that's my kind of guy! That's my kind of guy. Listen, thank you so much. I, everyone should go. How long is it in L.A. for? Um, it's closing this weekend, but it'll be back. So yeah, it'll be Pier. back, and it's going to be touring all over the world, including Canada, I hope, at some point, which yes. is where we air, in Australia. And now we just started airing in Houston, Texas. Oh, and now here's what we're going to do. We're going to sell some toothpaste. <laughs> so you can wash, brush your teeth before going to see the show. We'll be right back after this. Yeah! Listen, you know, the President of the United States could not have gotten where he is without this woman. And we'll never forgive her for that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the First Lady, Laura Bush. Well, thank you. 
you. Thank you so much. What a pleasure it is to be here. Who knew I could get such a warm welcome out in this left coast hornet's nest of gays and Jews? Bless you all. Thank you. Tonight I'm going to talk about some serious issues. Now, you know, normally when I go out, they only let me talk about literacy or the beautifying of national monuments. But uh, since we've been reelected and Karl Rove is about to go into the Hooskow, I can talk about whatever the hell I want to. So we're going to do big stuff tonight. I know everybody is very upset about the fact that my husband W. conquered Iraq. Y'all mad about that and now how everything went bad at the Abu grab ass prison and all that stuff. <laughs> Oh, it's really bad. And, and poor Condi Rice is going all over Europe telling everybody America does not condone torture. Well, that's easy for her to say. Have you heard her play the piano? <laughs> Bring a pillow. I'm telling you, I'd rather be waterboarded at Gitmo Bay than have to hear that one more time. My goodness. But I want all of you to know, I did tell my husband when we first went into Iraq, I told him, I said, you listen, if you are going to go invading every sand-blasted oil hellhole filled with religious zealots and greasy ethnics, well, you're going to spend a lot of time and money bombing Texas. That's what I told him. <laughs> but he did not listen to me. No, he did not. He did not even listen to his own pappy on that one, I'm telling you. He said he was talking to a higher father. Well, that was his dealer as far as I know. I never heard. I'll tell you something. We got a nickname for W's pappy. We call his pappy 41 because he was the 41st president of the United States. And we call W 43 because that's his IQ. That'll give you some insight on this problem. I'll tell you what. I, I want you to know when they told me I was going to be doing a talk show tonight in Burbank, I thought I was going to be on with Jay. Uh, uh, well, needless to say, somebody in the communication department lost their job. But anyway... Um, as we stand here in your lovely studio, immediately adjacent to a known crack alley, uh, I think it's only appropriate that I address the evils of chemical dependency. I know my husband has never been fully forthcoming about his past use of drugs and alcohol, so I'm going to go ahead and do that for him now. W used to party. There, I'm just going to put that out on the table. Don't sniff it. <laughs> just a little joke. Just a little one of those jokes I use. No, I'm telling you, W, when that cocaine used to come out back in the old days, you should have seen his eyes roll back in his head like a shark biting into a Canadian tourist. It was just shocking. <laughs> Watching W do that stuff was like shoveling snow into a furnace. You've never seen anything like it. Just throw it out and it was gone. But anyway, he is clean and sober now. I want you to know he has not had anything to drink or any drugs for four years. Uh, Fourteen. Sixteen. Uh, check with Carl Rose's office on that. There is a figure. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it's been a long time. And, of course, I do myself occasionally have a cocktail, though. Uh, if Barbara Bush was your mother-in-law, you'd drink, too. You know that. I stopped putting ice in my bourbon in 1993. It has not been pretty. And W has fun sometimes, too. I will every now and then on a special occasion. I, I let him cook up a little crystal methamphetamine in the bathtub. You know, uh, just for a holiday or something like that. But that's legal in Texas, so we're all right with that. And so there you have it. It's a chemical dependency problem, but we in the White House stand behind it. We really do. Now, before I go, I want to say one more thing. I know people in California aren't big on the GOP, but uh, if you join our party, I want to make a promise to you. We are a big tent party, and all you queers and Jews and trannies, werewolf, whatever, we may not always agree with you on the issues, and, and, and we may not support your human rights, but if you give us your support, I promise you this, we will stand next to you in a picture. There you have it. God bless you all, and God bless America. Come on over here, Miss Bush. Hello. Oh, it is so nice to meet you, Mrs. Cheryl. God love you. Hello, Jackie. How are you, honey? It is very good. I am doing just fine. What a delight well, to be here. Well, it is a delight for us, and we really, we were kind of surprised because, you know, we bash you all the time on this show. Well, I've, I've never seen honest. your show. Yeah, well, I think the Q Television Network, I think we just heard, is getting implemented into the White House. Oh, it is? Yeah, I think, well... Just on uh, the list that they keep. Yeah, Jeff Gannon, I think there's a reporter named Jeff Gannon. And Jeff and Carl are together, I believe, yeah. and they watch it. That's, uh, that's what I so heard. And so I think that they're... But, uh, but we... Here's my question for you. I can see you handling George W., you know, but I cannot understand how you can cope with that cow mother-in-law of yours, 
Miss Moo Woman herself, well, Barbara. It is not easy, I'll tell you. First off, I had to make it very clear that I am the first lady yes. of the United yeah. States now. When she is wedged in the Lincoln bedroom and will not come out, it is not pretty. No. It is not. But I, she wanted me to tell you something. She is a fan of your late great husband, Xavier Cougar. Oh, okay, okay. She, really, she loves to do the samba dance, Barbara Bush. Oh, she did that. Uh -huh. I didn't know that. It's, yeah. It's too late. Cougar is dead. Yes, I, I know, but it. Barbara's not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, she, when she does the samba, it hits about 4.7 on the Richter scale. <laughs> and, and people had to be actually the air lifted off of their roofs last time oh, she did. Oh, okay, okay. But they're underprivileged, so it worked out okay for them anyway. Well, what do you think about your, what do you think when your mother-in-law went into the Astrodome and made those, you know, brilliant, brilliant, brilliantly stupid comments? Well, it's not the first time that she's done that. You know, uh -huh. she's not really, she, she's a kind of a large woman. In fact, pound for pound, she's the biggest first lady that we've ever had. And so you really don't tell her, like you don't walk right up to her and say, Barbara, that was wrong because she will knock the crud right out of you. I bet she would. Oh, she will. She'll uh -huh. do it. She's big. She's a big lady. And so, no, I, we didn't say much to her about it, and W scared to death of her, so he didn't say anything about yeah. it either. I think I read one time that, that uh, she called W a sissy. A uh, sissy? Uh-huh. Because he was a cheerleader. Wasn't he a cheerleader? Oh, yeah. Well, he is a sissy. He is a sissy. Uh, we have one of those traditional Southern marriages. You uh -huh. know, uh, if, you, if you are a Southern wife, there's always a time when the men folk go out to the barn and do you don't know what can out you, there. And can you, we just look the other way. That's why I drink. Can you tell us where <laughs> GW was from the year 1973 till about 1981? Because he seemed to be totally missing. We don't know where he was. <laughs> uh -huh. I, I, I was nursing twins, honey. Right. In those days, he was off hitting the bottle somewhere. Uh, somewhere. Yeah. I don't know. He wasn't flying an airplane. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> well, let me ask you this, though. Is it, we hear a rumor that he's drinking again. Oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. He, uh, you know, uh, there was that one time when he turned the game on and sealed the White House and then that had that pretzel incident. Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah, you don't, fall, you don't choke on a pretzel without having a six-pack first. <laughs> exactly. I can tell you that right now. That's exactly what I thought. Yeah, well, and then after this Hurricane Katrina thing, he started drinking hurricanes. First it was a hurricane, then he was drinking hurricanes, then he got upset with me. I got a black eye, I got another diamond, and it's a long story. Oh, <laughs> Fabulous. Well, we're going to hear some music. What do we have here, uh, Miss Jackie? Are we going over to Kurt? Kurt? Let's go back to Kurt. Kurt Kirkwood. Okay. Go. Thick as mud in the boring rain. Time stood still and remains the same. Nowhere onion rolling slow, towering smokestack covered with snow. The light lights my heart. The truth would fall. Sand echoing now and the slapping hand sometimes slip, all times high, giant spires, a heavenly spies. Man-made clowns 
some time slip All time high Giant spires Heavenly spires Light, lights my heart What a super fantastic show. What an incredible sofa of entertainers, to some degree or less. But this is not about entertainment. This is not about showbiz. This is about what have we learned? What will we take away from this show and be blogging all night about? Each one of us will take away something different. Myself, it'll be a paycheck. But let's start with you, Billy. What is it that you will take away from this show? You know, I've, today I've learned that I really dig this show. I think it's creative, funny, and, uh, and really exciting. So I'm going to take that away. I, the fact that I really like the show. It's yeah. great. Yeah. Very good. Thank you very much. And we love you too. And just for that compliment, we're going to put your uh, website up twice. Oh. See how that goes? <laughs> Laura, could you possibly have learned anything tonight? There's nothing really left for me to learn. Uh, but I will say this. I did learn that uh, there is more than one talk show being made in Burbank. Yeah, I, absolutely. I learned that. And I also learned that for taping of a show like this, I should try a three Xanax, two Valium combination. I think that's Yes, right. that works best yeah. for me. Yeah. Kurt, what about you? Uh, I, I think that the, uh, that the, the you know, I've learned, I, I didn't realize that the blessed season of the Nazarene is upon us and the, uh, and, uh, you know, I didn't know that till I got here, and I, I realized that it's a fertile breeding ground for the beast. Yeah. Chara, what have you learned, honey? Oh, I learned so much. Uh, definitely, uh, my guitar is an antique. It's 1820 Ramirez, but I want Billy Close make it a uh, humongous. Yes. By the way, if you're out there, we thought it was a ram, but it's the University of El Paso. You're next on George's list. Yes. Right. Absolutely. Good night. Adios. Everyone, come back and see us again. Thank you.